Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise and these bumblefuck New Mexico on this spectacular spring morning Sunday March 12th 2017 no it's already afternoon especially being daylight savings time so I am in the process of uh, packing up my gas sucking truck to get the hell out of East Bumblefuck on this beautiful day to head back to Austin, Texas for a while. But before I go, I'm gonna do what I try to do every Sunday, although I might not be getting to it in the next couple of Sundays, and that's to bring you my Doomsday Sermon, where I share with you one of my latest favorite Bibles of the Apocalypse. And this is kind of a mixed bag. I had so much, so many high hopes for this book by a uh, fellow doomsday prophet, journalist Christian Parente. And Christian Parente, his, I believe, 2011 book, Tropic of Chaos, Climate Change, and the new geography of violence. And this is where uh, Christian sets out to explore the uh, relationship between climate change and the collapse of global industrial society and how climate change is going to bring this about, not so much bring it about as ramp it up as climate change is a threat multiplier to every other crisis unfolding all around this planet, which is bad enough, and then you throw climate change uh, on, on top of everything else, and we are fucked. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to read. Uh, I'm going to read just from the just from the introduction of the book where Christian comes galloping out of the gate, explaining to any clueless moron who does not understand this, what's going on on this planet. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the book. I love the uh, dedication, assuming his daughter, for Juliet and her whole generation with apologies. There you go. With apologies. Uh, that is exactly what uh, we owe the next generation. Okay, but before I get into the main reading of the catastrophic convergence, just want to read a just one paragraph about the facts. The facts. Okay, before he heads into the opinion. This is the facts. Talking about the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. You know that from the UN. <clears throat> the IPCC has been attacked by climate change denialists as alarmist and wrong because of several minor errors in its 2007 fourth assessment report. Addressing these, these minor errors did not, however, change the report's overall conclusions. In fact, alternative fact, I'm sure according to Donald Trump, in fact, because the IPCC operates on the basis of consensus, uh, you know, among all of these climate uh, climatologists, because the IPCC operates on the basis of consensus, its conclusions are, in fact, quite conservative, and its reports lag years behind the latest scientific developments. The IPCC represents the lowest common denominator of fully accepted conclusions from the scientific mainstream for anybody who does not understand the UN 
and the IPCC and the Paris Climate Talks and all of that, the IPCC uh, it, it is a joke because it is way too conservative. And we won't even get into the fact that they do not look at methane emissions when making their predictions about climate change in the balance of the 21st century. Okay, I want to read uh, just a little bit from uh, from the social challenge of climate change, just the first paragraph, and then we'll get into the catastrophic convergence. <clears throat> the social challenge, climate change, and this is now six years six years ago. Climate change is happening faster than initially predicted, and its impacts are already upon us in the form of more extreme weather events, des desertification, ocean acidification, melting glaciers, and incrementally rising sea levels. The scientists who construct the computer models that analyze climate data believe that even if we stop, in 2011, even if we had stopped dumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere six years ago, CO2 levels are already so high that we are locked into a significant increase in global temperatures. Disruptive climate change is a certainty even if even if we make the economic shift away from fossil fuels. And you can certainly see uh, how well we're doing that by voting in Donald Trump and his uh, horsemen of the apocalypse. But anyway, where he really spells it out and maps it, what I was thinking was going to be him mapping out the rest of this book all comes together here in the introduction in his little section called The Catastrophic Convergence. <laughs> the Catastrophic Convergence in the Tropic of Chaos. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just going to read this whole section for this sermon. Take it away, Brother Christian. Brother Christian. Climate change arrives in a world primed for crisis. The current and impending dislocations of climate change intersect with the already existing crises of poverty and violence. I call this collision of political, economic, and environmental disasters the catastrophic convergence. By catastrophic convergence, I do not merely mean that several disasters happen simultaneously, one problem on top of another. Rather, I argue that problems compound and amplify each other, one expressing itself through another. Don't want him digging up the dust here. <clears throat> See if you can make the Donald Trump connection from these words written in 2011, looking looking ahead into the 21st century. Let's see how well this doomsday prophet called this one. Societies like people deal with new challenges in ways that are conditioned by the traumas of their past. Thus, damaged societies like damaged people, often respond to new crises in ways that are irrational, short-sighted, and self-destructive. In the case of climate change, the prior traumas that set the stage for bad adaptation, the destructive social response, are Cold War era militarism and the economic pathologies of neoliberal capitalism. Over the last 40 years, both of these forces have distorted the state's relationship to society, 
removing and undermining the state's collectivist, regulatory, and redistributive functions while overdeveloping its repressive and military capacities. Thus, and this, I argue, inhibits society's ability to avoid violent dislocations as climate change kicks in. Thank you, uh, Brother Christian, for spelling out the Donald Trump administration being born as this clueless fucking moron society's response to the catastrophic convergence unfolding on this planet. <clears throat> in this book, I examine the prehistories of the climate disaster in order to explain how the world came to be such a mess and thus so prone to respond to climate change in, in the very ways that exacerbate the social fallout of the new extreme weather. In much of the world, it seems that the only solidarity forthcoming in response to climate change is an exclusionary tribalism. An exclusionary tribalism can you say, make America great again by drill, baby, drill? And the only state policy available is police repression. Can you say, the Dakota Access Pipeline? This is not natural and inevitable, but rather the result of history particularly the history of the global north's use and abuse of the global south that has destroyed the institutions and social practices that would allow a different, more productive response. <clears throat> the Cold War sowed instability throughout the Third World. Its myriad proxy wars left a legacy of armed groups, cheap weapons, smuggling networks, and corrupted officialdoms in developing countries. Neoliberal economic policies, such as radical privatization and economic deregulation, where have we heard economic deregulation uh, for the planet eaters recently? Uh, enforced by the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, otherwise known as the banksters behind it all, have pushed many economies in the third world, or if you prefer the term, the global south, into permanent crisis and extreme inequality. In these societies, the state has often been reduced to a hollow shell, devoid of the institutional capacity it needs to guide economic development or address social crises. Sometimes these forces have worked together simultaneously, at other times they have been quite distinct. For example, Somalia. Somalia was destroyed by Cold War military interventions. It became a classic proxy battleground. Though it underwent some limited economic liberalization, its use as a pawn on the chessboard of global political struggle caused its collapse. The same holds true for Afghanistan, which was, and still is, a failed state. It never went, it never underwent structural adjustment, but was a proxy battleground. On the other hand, Mexico, the north of which is now experiencing a profound violent crisis was not a frontline state during the Cold War, but it too was subject to radical economic liberalization. So climate change now joins all of these crises acting as an accelerant. 
the Pentagon calls it a threat multiplier. All across the planet, extreme weather and water scarcity now inflame and escalate existing social conflicts. Columbia University's Earth Institute and the International Crisis Group combining databases on civil wars and water availability found that, quote, when rainfall is significantly below normal, the risk of a low-level conflict escalating to a full-scale civil war approximately doubles the following year, close quote. The project cites the example of Nepal, where the Maoist insurgency was most severe after droughts and almost non-existent in areas with normal rainfall. In some cases, when the rains were late or light, or came all at once or at the wrong time, semi-retired armed, armed groups often re-emerged to start fighting again. Between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer lies what I call the Tropic of Chaos, a belt of economically and politically battered post-colonial states girding the planet's mid-latitudes. In this band, around the tropics, climate change is beginning to hit hard. The societies in this belt are also heavily dependent on agriculture and fishing, thus very vulnerable to shifts in weather patterns. This region was also on the front lines of the Cold War and of neoliberal economic restructuring. As a result, in this belt we find clustered most of the failed and semi-failed states of the developing world. According to a Swedish government study, there are 46 countries, this is in 2011, home to 2.7 billion people in which the effects of climate change interacting with economic, social, and political problems will create a high risk of violent conflict. The study's list covers that same terrain, those mid-latitudes that are now being most affected by the onset of anthropogenic climate change. Western military planners, if not political leaders, if not political leaders, recognize the dangers in this convergence of political disorder and climate change. Hmm. Instead of worrying about conventional wars over food and water, they see an emerging geography of climatologically driven civil war, refugee flows, pogroms, and social breakdown. In response, they envision a project of open-ended counter-insurgency on a global scale. That is exactly what the, this goddamn war on terror is. It is a, what did we, do we call that? Uh, a project of open-ended counter-insurgency on a global scale. It is the endless wars, the endless resource wars, and the endless war on terror on a global scale uh, that is ramping up on this planet and, and is getting ready to go through the stratosphere <clears throat> as climate change ramps up on this planet, bringing in the threat multiplier as uh, the head of Donald Trump's EPA announces that carbon dioxide is not, in his opinion, a responsible for any part of climate change or global warming. Can anybody say uh, we are so fucked? 
But anyway, guys, I, I was going to wrap, wrap up the, this sermon here and hallelujah, amen, brother Christian, for everything I just read. But I, I've just got to caution you when you when you get this book, you, you might be, if you're anything like me, a little bit disappointed because after this excellent uh, introduction to what's going on on this planet, uh, he seems to quickly lose focus. And, uh, of course, I just can't help. Uh, I just can't help uh, just, just, just pointing this out. So he spends, you know, entire sections of the book breaking down the Tropic of Chaos. He starts out in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, looking at, uh, you know, the, the catastrophic convergence. He goes from there to India, to Pakistan in India, looking at the catastrophic convergence. And then he goes to Latin America, looking at all the various factors weighing in on the catastrophic convergence uh, being multiplied in th level of threat by climate change, and you will never find what word? Never mentioned one time in any discussion about Sub-Saharan Africa, Pakistan, India, and Latin America looking at the reason for the, the catastrophic convergence, you will not find Brother Christian Parente ever uttering the word overpopulation. So I actually went to the index on the book Tropic of Chaos to look for the word overpopulation, you will not find the word overpopulation in the index of Tropic of Chaos because Christian Parente obviously does not consider overpopulation to have anything to do with the reason we are so fucked, and that is just one more reason we are so fucked. That when someone this brilliant who gets it will not, will not go there, that it is time to nip this little problem in the bud. But anyway, just with that little ham bone uh, disclaimer, if you are going to get this book, I still highly recommend Christian Parente's Tropic of Chaos climate change and the new geography of violence. And I'm going to wrap up my final doomsday sermon from the chicken coop in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico. And uh, I'm going to water this beautiful garden one more time. And uh, it looks like I have uh, found a neighbor who was quite thrilled to take over this beautiful organic garden because all they got to do is come turn on the faucet but I'm going to turn on the faucet one more time and water this beautiful garden while I pack up my gas sucking truck to get the hell out of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico to go party in Austin, Texas. Bye guys.